Polymers are made up of thousands of monomers arranged in long chains interlinking to form a strong network with varying properties depending upon the- Whoa, 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 slow down. Let's take this back to the beginning, shall we? Polymers are a branch of chemistry. Chemistry is that thing which you and your crush don't have. A polymer is a long chain of repeating units called monomers, with mono meaning one and mer meaning part. Thus, a polymer is poly meaning many, mer parts. A polymer can be made of a single monomer or many different monomers joined together to form a long chain. Polymers or macromolecules can be divided into two branches, natural polymers and synthetic polymers. Natural polymers include things such as DNA, proteins, cellulose, and a huge range of other compounds used to make up most living things. In this video, I will focus on synthetic polymers, which are further subcategorized into step growth and chain growth polymers. Step growth polymerization involves the combining of two reactive functional groups in a condensation reaction, forming a small molecule, usually water, as a byproduct. Both monomers must have functional groups at each end of the molecule so that a long chain can form, as shown in the example of the formation of Kevlar from 1,4-diaminobenzene and benzene 1,4-dicarboxylic acid seen here. Chain growth polymers are formed by the addition of alkene monomers to the end of a polymer chain. The end of the chain remains reactive as it is either a radical, cation or anion allowing more alkenes to react with the end group to form a long chain until the reactive species is terminated. The synthesis I will give an example of is that of polyacrylamide as this is relevant to living polymers. The chain polymerization of acrylamide begins with an initiation reaction in which the oxygen-oxygen bond in bisulfate is broken homolytically forming two radical species. These go on to react with the alkene groups in acrylamide to form a radical carbon atom which continues to react with more monomers in a series of propagation steps to form a long chain. The reaction terminates when the end group is deactivated. This usually occurs through chain combination where two reactive radicals on different polymer chains react with one another to form a bond or, less commonly, the reactive radical can abstract a hydrogen from another chain forming an alkene and an alkane in a disproportionation reaction. See this polymer? Dead. See this one? Dead. What about this little fella over here? Dead. The development of living polymers is changing our perception on synthetic materials to effectively dead. They do not respond to their environment, they do not adapt to stress, they do not say thank you after you make them a cup of tea. Living polymers are still in their infancy, however, with recent developments paving the way for a new type of living polymer, the future looks promising. Polyacrylamide, along with poly 2 acrylamido 2 methylpropane sulfonic acid sodium salt, or PANAMPS, as we shall hereforth refer to it as, forms a double network hydrogel with the two polymer networks interpenetrating. The polyacrylamide forms an elastic framework and the PANAMPS forms a rigid brittle network throughout. When mechanical stress is applied to the gel, the elastic network can stretch whilst retaining stability, whereas the brittle network breaks apart to form reactive mechanoradicals, which are simply radicals formed by homolytic bond breakage due to mechanical stress. These mechanoradicals can react with monomers in a solution in which the hydrogel is submerged, reforming the rigid network only stronger. Self-healing materials have been heavily pursued. In self-healing materials, the goal is for the material to recover to its original state after being damaged, opposed to conventional materials, which will become weaker over time. This prevents the need for materials to be replaced. Self-growing materials, on the other hand, with their new ability to become stronger and adapt on their own, grant new possibilities in several industries. The world of robotics is dominated by humanoids with limited mobility. Whilst these models are good for repetitive tasks, they are unequipped to deal with more uncertain environments. This is where soft robotics prevails. To envision a soft robot, you must first imagine an octopus. Now stop imagining, because I'm going to show you one. An octopus is void of any rigid parts, yet is very successful in its environment. Soft robotics heavily takes inspiration from the octopus to create a robot with no rigid parts, capable of adapting to different environments to achieve a multitude of functions. Living polymers are ideal for soft robotics as they are able to mimic the muscle found in the biological systems which inspired them. By using living polymers, a soft robot can adapt to any environment it is placed in, retain the information it learns and modify itself to optimise itself for the environment, even through a number of external changes. The medical field is a huge potential customer of the soft robotics industry. Usually, surgeons use rigid tools which, for minimally invasive surgeries, can prove problematic. Soft robots can be equipped with a camera and a light, helping surgeons to better see what they are doing with no restriction of movement or risk of damaging the patient's fragile interior. Some surgeries are even capable of being conducted with a single needle, which, for a soft robot capable of moving around organs to find its target site, 
has obvious advantages over a rigid scalpel. Much like muscle tissue requires a constant supply of nutrients in order to rebuild its structure, so too does the hydrogel. A constant supply of monomers must be supplied to the gel in order for the rigid network to be able to rebuild itself. Currently, the best way of achieving this is to submerge the gel in a solution containing the monomer. However, this is impractical for many applications as it heavily restricts its use. Until more effective methods of delivery of monomer to the gel are developed, it is unlikely this technology will have much use outside of the lab. Another problem is that after many deformations, the rigid network can become so strong that the complex loses elasticity and becomes more rigid. If enough mechanical stress is applied to the hydrogel, the elastic network will break faster than the now very strong rigid network, causing the gel itself to break. Despite these limitations, the future for living polymers looks promising, and with the field in its infancy, who knows its true potential? Before you know it, there could be a multitude of new species, life created not through biology, but through science, and leading the charge in humans' ever-growing attempt to play God. Polymers.